miss those sticks. I think that uh, bounce of Dennis Lillybowl at Barry Richard has upset him. And I think he's throwing the bat a little bit. Bounce, that's a chance, it's out. Yes. Good bounce from Gilmore and a very ordinary a hook shot from Barry Richards. Got a faint touch and Rodney Marsh did the rest. The first wicket for the Australians. Very short bouncer. Richards not moving his feet quickly enough. He went off the uh, gloves, Bill. He didn't look very happy at all after that bouncer from Dennis Lilly this morning. Beaten. It's out. That's on edge. A very faint touch from Dennis Amos. Beautiful to be lifting off the seam. This one, not the in swinger, the out swinger. And Amos committed forward. Dennis will have been swinging the ball in nicely. This one did swing in and then straighten up off the wicket. It's a fine shot from Zahir. Four runs, beautifully timed, square of the wicket. First stroke of confidence this morning from the World Eleven. That went out off the seam. Hit the wicket. All those are here has not had the kind of trip he would have liked. He really is an accumulator of runs, this man. Swoop bat could be up. Oh, Max Walker, a fraction slow coming in. A very difficult chance that, but didn't go, actually go to hand as Walker stumbled at the last instant. And that's what Zahir thinks about Dennis Lilly's bouncer. He hit it beautifully, and Max Walker, no chance of catching it, really. Bouncer and hits that square, not properly timed, but gets it away. Pasco giving chase. Three runs. Good return from Len Pasco. Gilmore to Zahir. Oh, chance of running at the bar was in. It's so good. And running out off a misfield. How often do first class pickers get run out off a misfield? A tragic blow for the world, but Bob Warmer annoyed. A quick mix up. Quite an easy run, actually. What happened there was that Zaire Abbas was watching the ball and not his fellow batsman. If he'd have run straight away when Bob Wilmer called, they would have got to run easy. Yes, Zaire pushes that square. A misfield in the gully, and the ball going to Hooks's left hand, who picked it up and threw it beautifully. A fine piece of fielding from David Hooks, and it's three for 24. Driving in front of Greg Chappell, first slip. It would have been a great catch, but it was a regulation out to the Australian captain. Ball coming back in off the seam, edged it straight to Greg Chappell, getting ready to take the catch. And Rodney Marsh, who does dive, dives across and knocks the ball away. And a life for Zahir. Yeah, but, uh, it was definitely Greg Chappell's catch, going straight to him and just to his left. Conditions not easy to bat in. The bowlers should be taking full advantage of what's there for them today. It's a good shot, beats Max Walker mid off. <laughs> Max Walker giving chase. <laughs> going to run for. I, I thought that, that may have just been four, but they <laughs> run for. So four to Zahir. Walker. Sharp square of the wicket. Could be four runs. It is four runs. Ian Davis gives up the chase, and that was a beautiful 
shot from Asif Iqbal hitting square of the wicket. That's it, beautifully bowled. Very Pasco absolutely elated with Asif bowled Pasco 4 for 55 now. Sonny will be very thrilled with that one. Coming back a little bit off the seam and going straight through the gap. Uh, Asif, a very good driver of the ball, very keen to get onto the front foot and drive. And, uh, well, indeed, Lenny might be pleased with that. And you couldn't want a better sight for a fast bowler than a flying stump, and that one really flew. At the 10 over mark, uh, you don't have to have any catching field, fieldsman. There's Mushtaq getting off the mark, but once again getting very square on indeed. He was absolutely front on to the bowler when that ball came, and here he is. Most peculiar position for any batsman to be in. In fact, he was almost facing mid on. Beautifully played by Zahir. Four runs, superb shot. Beautifully played. That's the drive which Zahir has played so frequently and so well this morning already, gaining him another boundary and carrying him on to 36. Greg Chappell in the background just adjusting his field, bringing in two slips now for Mushtaq. And uh, down to fine leg, ball seemed to have come off the pad, but uh, he also got the bat onto it. In fact, took it right off the leg stump. Very late shot indeed. Yes, uh I would say rather fortunate for Mushtaq that he's uh, he got a bit of bat on that. Lenny's not pleased. Very late shot indeed by Mushtaq. His first boundary. He's eight now. And he's out late before. Bowling a slow ball and Mushtaq coming right inside to work it through the onside. Missed it. So Mushtaq leg before wicket to Pasco for eight. And it's now... 5 for 80. It's a very good piece of bowling by Lenny Pasco. Uh, he was a little disappointed not to get the LBW previously. And saw Mustak getting well across inside the delivery before. And uh, a very good piece of bowling. Full of length and at the stumps. And Lenny's delighted as well he might be. That's it with uh, Mustak. He does come right inside his stumps. And uh, Pasco seeing the signal behind him that he wanted to see. So it's five for 80 now. And that uh, Yorker almost getting through Tony Gregg once more. That's where the bowlers always aim to get through Gregg with this high back lift. Rod Marsh seems very upset there that Tony Gregg, in running through, was in the way. That one was the Yorker, as you could see. And uh, Gregg, running through, got between the stumps and Marsh, and that was what Marsh was complaining about. And you see Marsh felt he could have thrown at the stumps, but the back, the bat, or should I say the back of Gregg. I think, yes, that is it. Gregg gone, run out. Well, this time there was a clear view of the stumps, and Ian Davis made no mistake. Greg, a little bit slow in taking off, hesitated, and Greg has run out, the second run out in which Zahir has been involved, the second run out for the world team who can ill afford it. It's in the air, Max Walker, under it, and out. Can't be Gary Gilmore, and Zahir, Getting a top edge or the thickest part of the play, not in the centre, through high and straight down to Max Walker, who took a straightforward catch. 
a vital breakthrough by the Australians. Well, that's a good bounce left from Gary Gilmore. Got up very quickly. Zahir getting a top edge. The ball flying down to fine leg. And Max Walker taking the catch comfortably. Willie Chappell bowling to a plan, bowling off stump. Not sit that in the air, big Max Walker. Trying to force on the onside. A strange shot from Alan Watt, except for the fact that he was trying to hit to the bank at mid wicket position. Didn't quite get hold of it. Rather a straight ball catch to Max Walker running away to his right. Not a good shot that from Alan Not A little bit of a slow ball from Greg Chappell. Not looking to hit it away over the vacant mid wicket area, getting a top edge. And Max Walker running around taking a, a fairly comfortable catch. Just started to hit out. Off the front foot down to the third man, one run, Pasco the fieldsman. And Greg Chappell moves Ian Davis from mid wicket to straight to mid on there's the onside field only three men on the onside the offside well protected hit it hit it inland here's a chance he's allowed to hit that ball actually there's interference from the bowler there that's not on you actually can't do that and if Imran had wanted to he could have had a free hit at that ball yes looked as though Max just just in his delivery stride stride there ball slipping out of his hands and he could have had a hit at that. I'm sure if Tony Grigg had been there, he would have appealed for interference because um, Max is playing around. But I remember in India that I hit one of those for four and Chris Stackpole did in a, a tense situation because you can get run out of that delivery. So you might as well have a free hit if you think it's on. It's in the air, that could be out. Poor shot from Edwin and Ross Edwards under it. A strange shot for a man in this situation. With England playing so well on 21, he went for half hit then. Just tried to waft it on the onside. And Ross Edwards took a simple catch. Well, that's another bad shot. And I'm not playing a, a similarly bad shot. In the previous week it fell. And there is Imran going for the big hit on the leg side. Playing right across the line of the ball. The ball going high up in the air. They must be a bit annoyed with their middle order batsman. Getting out with so many overs remaining. Nothing in this attack now to warrant suicide because the wicket's playing so well. Snow's decided here that could be out down to deep cover. Laird's coming around, and they're all out. Well caught. The world all out for 128. And Mike Crocker here in the box with me would not be happy with those last three dismissals. The dismissals are not Imran and Snow with only 29 overs bold and Snow hitting straight down. Bruce Lears throw that deep cover. No, that's poor batting by the world side. Nothing in this wicket. The ball not moving around. In fact, a very good batting wicket this this stage in time and there's John Snow going for the big hit and very well caught by Bruce Laird. Well 129 uh, doesn't seem a great total for a side to have to make in 40 overs but the Australians to be honest have had their problems in limited over masses this year. Here in the Australian innings it's the second over John Snow is the bowler and he's bowling now to Bruce Laird. Bad ball but it's a chance it's dropped a very difficult chance at point to Asif Iqbal's right that was hit in the air. Asif threw himself to the right and got his right hand to the ball. Bad ball that from John Snow. It often happens. That's been sensing, sensing the bad ball, latching onto it there. And Asif just getting his hands to it. And into the over. It's no wicket for five. Bowled him. That could be one of the reasons that uh, makes it interesting. John Snow getting that ball to cut back, pinning back Ian Davis is off stump and my co-commentator 
Mike Proctor's got a big win here. Yes, that's the breakthrough the world have been looking for. Ian Davis committed to the back foot. The ball coming in off the seam and knocking back the middle stump. And there it is. Played outside. That may have got a faint touch on the pad. Australia loses their first wicket and they're one for seven. It's two slips in the gully for Greg Chapel now as snow comes in from the northern end with the breeze coming across the screen from left to right. That's a bad delivery and it's well played. That's four runs. Snow pitching full and wide on the leg starter and Chapel picking it up nicely. Good shot from Greg Chapel. He's in the air, hit it safely. Way to backward score leg for four runs. Spur to wicket, John Snow coming around, but that could be four runs. Yes, four runs all the way from Greg Chapel. Tony Greg pitched a far too short for a man bowling medium pace. Yes, Tony Greg bowling. Short and wide of the off stump. Greg Chapel across. Beautiful square cut. It's straight into the ground, right over the top of that. Kept the head still. John Snow a little bit lucky there because he stood on the ball and, and trying to stop it going over the ropes. Hey. Miss Byers are here. Kicked slightly, and it could be four more. Start from Tony Gregg and a fine shot from Greg Chapel. And it's in the air. Someone is coming around under it. Wilmer is there, takes the catch, he's dropped it. It's gone through his hands, looked as if he had it. And in fact, I believe that could well be six. I think it dropped through his hands and over the boundary. There it is again. Wilmot judged it well, and the catch dropped just inside the boundary. In fact, it's four runs. <laughs> and I'm sure enjoying the Australian position at the moment. And he's gone. Hesitation between the two batsmen, and Greg Chappell is run out. taking that right hand off the bat. Tony Gregg, the ball thrower, and Greg Chappell out by, ooh, 18 inches at least, I would have thought. And that is a blow for Australia. They are now two for 70, but still in a very good position. Snow down at deep mid-wicket. Wilma close in there, and getting off the mark. Cut shot down to the boundary. Perhaps didn't time it as he wanted, but nevertheless, it goes down to the boundary. And he's gone, stumped. I think he just about gave it away. Really, that top hand is getting all sorts of problems. And the first ball from Mushtak, he charged down the wicket, the leg break left him, and not did the rest. moving out of his crease and that ball turned and there's no chance of him getting back if it's stumped by a knot. In the 20th over of the Australian innings the applause is for David Hooks making his reappearance to top class cricket. He was struck in the jaw and had his jaw fractured by Andy Roberts in the same ground in the super test some weeks ago. He played at Hamilton 10 days ago and here he is back on the field now but this time although wearing a helmet facing a bowler at far less pace it's Mushtaq Mohammed. In the air and safe no man out at deep forward square in fact hooks waited very nicely on that it was a slower ball and underwood was drawing him into the stroke a little bit too quickly 
Yes, and we see their hooks sweetly picking it up. The delivery was aimed towards leg stump. It was a tempting ball from Underwood, and Young Hooks picked it up, hit it well. Underwood going with a short leg and four men protecting the offside. That's a beautiful strike. And once again, the batsman waiting for the slower ball. And Underwood trying to buy a wicket. And it's now three for 100. Going over the wicket to the left-hander. Aiming at those foot marks. It's high in the air. John Snow could be six or out. It's six. Well struck by David Hooks. Snow was perfectly placed, but the hit was too strong. And with throwing it up there to be hit, spinning in. I just wonder whether David Hooks should be looking to sweep that ball on the ground. Edwards on 23, Hooks 19. Slow ball again, and he's out this time. If Bushy takes it, he does. And Hooks has gone for 19. Trying to loft Underwood away down the ground. And it's the last ball of Underwood's over. And his permitted eight overs. He has one for 41. I really wonder whether David Hooks needs to loft the ball in the style. Middle it's his first hit for some time in a big match, but there's not as much space. Uh, in the air as one thinks in a cricket match. And on the ground is the answer, but it's four for 115. And now the roar from the crowd signaling that they know there's just the one run needed for the victory. And there it is. That one has hit it many a mile into the outfield. There'll be some little lad out there picking up a white ball to take home. Probably not giving it up. 1978, Australia defeating the world. Each of uh, Jeff Marsh and perhaps the turning point.